I have this network to explore and my first move will be to export an image so that I can take a few notes. I suggest that you simply print the visualization and annotate it with a big pen. I would do that myself, but it's easier to take notes on the computer for this video, so I would just use a drawing software. My process is just about trying to understand each cluster and name it. In Giphy, I am zooming on a cluster like this one so that I can read the labels and follow the links. This cluster looks like a bunch of cheeses to me, so I will just write cheese on my note-taking picture. Then I move to another cluster. This one has a big node in the middle that gives the explanation right away. Those are Michelin-starred restaurants in the Netherlands. Next cluster, those are Italian cheeses. Okay, so that means that my first cluster was not just cheese, but French cheese. My bias was showing, but the corpus was still able to keep it in check. So naming the clusters it is iterative. It's a form of coding, right? So it's okay that I go back and change my previous labels. I will only be able to give appropriate cluster names once I have seen all the clusters. Next cluster, it's about wine for sure. I do not want to call it just wine for two reasons. First, I do not know if there are other clusters about wine or not. And second, I am not sure whether this is one or two clusters. Some of the articles are about a given wine, others are not. We find many articles like Spanish wine, German wine, French wine in the lower part of the cluster. I believe that the top subcluster is about Spanish wine specifically and the bottom part about wine in different European countries. I do not take community detection too seriously because I just use this as some visual aid and I will retain the distinction between those two areas of the network. I want to see the neighboring clusters now. I wonder if they are about wine or not. Um, it turns out that they are about other alcoholic drinks, beer, whiskey, vodka, and many things I, I have never heard about. So similarly, I could group them all in a big cluster or I could consider them as many small clusters. This is really about the level of description I want to enforce. At this stage, I will just follow the distinction that makes the most sense to me, given my understanding of the topic, and I will distinguish between beers and spirits. Next is a cluster about cookies and sweet snacks. The order I process the clusters is not super important, as I will do the entire network anyway. I have just decided to start with the periphery first and then move gradually to the, the more central clusters. So the more I progress, the more the clusters are overlapping. I expect that it becomes more and more difficult to demarcate them. Let's see if we can understand what's going on. This is pasta, or probably Italian pasta. This one at first, I think it's charcuterie, but then I realized that it's more like specifically about sausage. Here I first see Portuguese cheeses, but then I realized that there are other non-cheese dishes, so I go with Portuguese food. This is a set of articles, each dedicated to the cuisine of a given country. This is the cluster of soups. This is the cluster of sandwiches. This is the cluster of potato dishes. English cuisine. It seems to have different subclusters, but I, I will overlook it because I do not know that cuisine enough. A cluster about apples. That, that's unexpected. The pudding cluster. Italian cuisine. It's a pretty big cluster. This cluster. I don't know what it is various sauces and dressings, Turkish cuisine, pastries, and cake. Let me show you the, the result of my note-taking process. I was able to give a label to most of the clusters, even in the big central part where everything seems connected to everything else. The colors from modularity clustering really helped me there. I think that there are many observations to do about these clusters, and I will start by remarking that the structure does not look like a map of Europe. And it is not a map of ingredients either. Sometimes the clusters are about a type of food, regardless of the country, like soup. 
Sometimes it's about the country regardless of the type of food, like Turkish cuisine, and sometimes it's both at the same time, like the cheeses. And sometimes it's neither, like the cluster about the cuisine of every country. Sometimes the proximity between the clusters makes sense, like for beer, wine and spirits, or Turkish cuisine and Greek cuisine, but sometimes I don't understand the proximities like Italian cuisine and English cuisine. The size of the clusters is also remarkable. Why is the Turkish cuisine so big? And why is there no cluster about French cuisine, for instance, or Nordic cuisine? Why is there a cluster about apples and not about other fruits or vegetables? Why are the Netherlands specifically invested in restaurants? Those are the questions that arise from this network. The purpose of the visualization is to support those lines of inquiry, is to make those points silent. I think that I need to do a better job at separating the clusters in the big central part. I also find that the clusters of the periphery take a lot of space visually while they do not have much to say. So those will be my goals for improving the visualization. Make the central clusters more readable by giving them more visual space and more separability. I want to unpack the central part. That's what I will be doing in the next video.